want to take your game to the next level, you want to be a world champion, take the fighter training stack. Victor Conte's fighter training stack has brought me to the next level. Everything that I take on a daily basis, the fighter training stack is the best thing out right now. Devin Haney, I'm Snack Strong. Get it now, right now. They, 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 they give into what these motherfuckers talk about. You know what I'm saying? They talk, Jamil Sholo was on the ropes. What, I fought myself off the ropes? Who got hurt? Who got hurt more? Who got buckled? Who? To me, I won all that shit. I'm him. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I just won't get myself on the ropes that much. And when I fucking start feeling the ropes, I'm gonna start getting myself off the ropes, put it back in the center of the ring. Castano was a guy that throws him 100,000 punches on me, so they say on some bullshit. Not against me, so what? I ran, I won that opportunity. I won that objective. He didn't throw as many punches at me. Why? Because he because he did, he would have got hurt. He would have the fight would have ended. Let him come in there charging me up like that again. I'm gonna come in that motherfucker and smash him. This time around, thank you, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> this is the president of Showtime. Why he keep bringing me back? Why they keep doing this to me? Why they keep, because they, they fuck with me, they fuck with my skills. They understand what I possess in the ring. I'm human. On the, Brian, on the Brian Custer interview, you raised a concern about the VADA testing. Have that been agreed upon for this oh match? Oh my gosh, these people been coming to my house so much. I hope they coming to his house like this. They been fucking testing me, man, pissing me at and fucking taking all my blood, four tubes, everything, like what's up? I asked for him to goddamn get tested too. I hope he getting the same shit. Yeah, they, they, they doing what they got to do, and I appreciate them. I can't complain. They're waking me up early. I got to hold my piss all the way to like 8 or 9 just in case they come early. <laughs> Jamel, do you feel like, you know, you're the fighter that can make the improvements from fight one because, you know, he's 5'7", and is that is crowding you and doing what he did in the first fight? Can he really do anything different than that type of game plan? I don't understand what else he can do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, when you really got sick, Brian Costano, Brian Costano is a rugged, rugged fighter. Yeah, you come forward. But can he back up? Like, I don't know what skill sets he can. Hey, hey, y'all from fucking from, uh, California, y'all know what he, why he pulled that shit up? Why he didn't come in and fight me March 19th? It's y'all that know the truth. But no matter what, I'm gonna get in there and I ain't worried about 19th. I ain't worried about Brian Castano. I'm worried about the best of Jamel Charlo, the one of the Charlo twins. The reason why Lions Only is so popping. It's me, guys. I did it. I've been doing this shit since I was signed with Golden Boy, and them motherfuckers didn't do me right. But you know what? Shout out to Al Heyman. He's been doing an amazing job with, with us. I know they talk a lot of that shit about us, and they don't like us. Half of motherfuckers don't like me either. And I understand that. I just didn't sit here and give y'all what y'all need and what y'all want, because I don't come around too often. You know, and that's the thing. Y'all got to learn to appreciate these fighters like me and my brother when we, when we, when we finally come around. That's when y'all, y'all like, you know, get your eyes and put your ears on. You know what I'm saying? L listen, listen to us. Cause you know, like I don't do this shit. It's not for me. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how long my career gonna last and I've been doing this for a long time since 07. And I'm, I'm at the top of the pinnacle. I've got th three of the four belts that we, and I'm trying to get number four and I'm gonna do everything I can. May the best man win. Hey. Jamel, what happens if you become undisputed? What other goals do you have? I haven't even that. set any goals, you know. You know, I haven't set any goals. I, I, my goal is to become undisputed right now. Um, I, I felt like winning a belt was a huge thing. Now everybody can win a belt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like becoming undisputed is a major thing, and then everybody can become undisputed. Like, I see, like little, like like Devin Haney, for instance. He got opportunity to be, God put him in place to be undisputed. Now I'm realizing that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? So. This is one of the biggest achievements a boxer can make, becoming undisputed, to obviously fight for undisputed, to even be an opportunity. So it's like, uh, I'm gonna take this moment and enjoy it. And I'm gonna have fun when I get in there um, on May 14th. I'm five days before my birthday. I'll be turning 32 May 19th. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fuck this kid up. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you, I make all of these people somebody. Tony Harris and Louvre, all these people that then fought me before. Nobody knew who these people was. Nobody knew who Brian Costano was. I think he fought me. His fucking following was go up. But you know, you got that, you got that, that, that crowd that want to see. And I, and I hope I get the judges that, that really understand boxing. You know what I'm saying? This is what boxing is. Not, let's get the knockout. Everybody's so used to me knocking people out. The moment I don't knock somebody out, they say, oh, this, it's an issue with this kid. Something ain't right. Because why? They knock him out? Like, goddamn, this is a skillful sport. You know, you got to pay the bills with this. 
So this is what this is this is what it's gonna be. What you if you do about? if you do become undisputed, would you like to fight the winner of Spence versus Crawford, making it undisputed versus undisputed? <sighs> I, I I have no intentions to fight my stable. Now Crawford could get that work. I don't give a fuck about him. I don't know that nigga. <laughs> the nigga don't know me. We could make anything happen. But when you got an emotional tear to somebody, you know, like that's like me fighting my twin brother. Now, like Spence said, you know, if that motherfucking money right, they putting that brick bread out there and we can, we gonna get in there with anybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I, we're not gonna turn down nobody. Neither was Spence, neither none of these people. Crawford ain't did shit in 154. How y'all want him to fight me? I'm, I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to become undisputed right now. How, am, how are we talking to a, about somebody that ain't even fought in the division? How do he just jump from there to there? Like, what, what, who, what connection do he got to this world? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, where that tall, lanky motherfucker at? What you make of him and uh, Lubin and him saying that he wants you guys next? Right, right. They didn't put the, they, this is what I do, you know? If that's, the, if that's what Al Heyman has in store for me, and I got other man, I, when you become a champion like this, you got mandatory, you got the mandatory, you got all of these people in the way. In 2017, I had knocked the number one guy out, turn around and knocked another, the, the next number one guy out. Like, maybe I'll be the shot caller and make the decisions on who I want to fight next. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Fondora, go fight somebody else. I don't know. Crawford, go fight. Y'all fight each other. I'm busy. Motherfucker, I'm busy. <laughs>